Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our snack time snippet for GovCon 365. I'm Paul Skirpsky, joined by Mark Lahart, and today we're going to talk a little bit about setting up a TNM contract. So, in an earlier session, we talked a little bit about the home page and the idea that you can have different tabs of information or links to quickly get to a rec get to a record. In this case, I want to launch my job record. From the link on the front page that takes us into a list of all of our jobs. On the right hand side you see this fact box with, it, with information about that individual job. So it's kind of like a quick access to a report without having to run one. We've got information about contract value, funded value, AR balance, billings, etc. We would also see kind of documents attached. So if you want to attach the original PO or any kind of terms related to that work being performed, you could attach that document there. Like I talked about on the TNM project, you know, now as I scroll down to the TNM project, you can see that that fact box is showing me information about that specific record. So let's go ahead and open up the TNM job. We'll talk a little bit more about how we set that up. So a couple, I think, unique things that Microsoft provides is one, we've got some nice little copy functions. So I can either copy the entire job or copy tasks from a prior job. So it allows us to easily set the job up without a lot of keystrokes. If we're setting it up from scratch, you'd have your individual job number, description of that project, details about the billing customer. Um, over to the right, we got a main contact at that client. Who is our PM? Um, and then as we scroll down, you'll see in the government contracting section, information about setting up that particular job. So we've got our revenue and billing formulas. And these are all configuration based. So we've got some predefined setups, but within that setup, you have that ability to set your own formulas. So with the TNM, it's a predefined formula where our labor is based on a sale price. So we'll show you how to set up the, the TNM pricing. And then labor is at just cost. We're not applying any burdens or fee, you know, like we would in a cost type project. So you know, it's pre-built but you do have that ability to have a setup that's unique to some new work that you might earn or you know, a new kind of project that the government dreams up. Some of these fields are related to a cost type project and we've got another video on that if you'd like to enjoy learning about how to set up a cost reimbursable project. On the contract side of the, the government contracting tab, you've got information about the contract type and this would go into our incurred cost submission and also the primary contract number. That would look up into our contract card. In this case, it's a GSA contract vehicle. Uh, we can look at both labor and uh, non-labor, so any products that you might sell. So I could actually edit that vehicle or open it up to see the details behind it. So it would show me information such as contracting office from the client side, any IFF, that's your industrial funding fee, So the fee that you pay on a GSA project. Um, we talked about the ability to have item pricing, and we've got to import to bring in those items. So if you're actually selling products and services to the government, and you've got a, a GSA catalog uh, or a soup catalog, you can bring that in for uh, billing out predefined rates on your uh, inventory. Uh, and then related to, um, that same scenario, we also have the ability to set up contract rules, multiple contacts at the client side. Uh, we talked about that active catalog, which would be uh, the approved catalog you have, and then the ability to set up your TNM labor rates. So what's great about that is you can have your predefined GSA labor rates, and then we've got the ability to just copy them in. Um, and then you can also offer a discount off those rates. So really some simple ways to manage the contract be able to store your rates in one place and make sure you're not billing over those rates and offer a discount on the individual job. And we've got information about the contracting office and paying office related to that job. Paul, well, I have a question for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark. So can you, uh, can you share with the uh, viewers here how they would uh, you know, manage modifications to the contract? Oh, great question, Mark. Yeah. So if you have any contract mods, 
Uh, we'll, we'll see that in a couple different places. You actually saw on the, uh, on the right hand side, that fact box showed us the contract and funded value. We can get to it from there. We can also get to it from our work breakdown structure. So this work breakdown structure, it's a 60 character alphanumeric field. You're separating the levels with a dash. So we've got this top level for base realignment. And as I scroll over to the right, what you're gonna see is the total contract and funded value. If we needed to, um, if a mod was issued against this, we can either go through this section or there's another spot to go in. I would just hit new. And if we had a funding mod, I would just put in, you know, we'll type in funding mod. Oh, Let's see that uh, I did not take typing in class. I took uh, public speaking and neither is working right now. But uh, funding mod one, what is the effective date? So if I put in T, it just puts in today's date. And what is the impact on contract and funded base? Let's just pretend it's 100,000. Um, I can also, one zero short there, let's add one more zero. Um, you can also leverage copy and paste. So if I hit control C and control V, it'll copy and paste that in. So just a simple way for someone to record that mod and then make it available um, to anybody in the organization. So just quickly record the mod. Um, and then at that point, um, it's then available for us performing work against that mod. Other things within the WBS is you can also attach Akron's or CLIN's from a funding perspective. In terms of visibility, we have the ability to define what charge codes can be visible. So you're charging at the lowest level of the WBS, and you can see that this charge code for labor is visible on a timesheet where this one that says travel and ODCs is only visible for an expense report. The period of time that'd be visible for would come from the individual task order. However, it can be restricted within the membership. So the idea there is that all employees can see it for the entirety of the period of performance, but you could actually restrict it for an individual. So I could say Timothy, maybe can only see it from 1-1 one, one of this year through 4-1. Um, so Timothy would only be able to see it during that period. Everybody else could see it for the entire period of performance. The period of performance is set up within our task setup. So when I go to the task detail, once you set up the, the WBS code, it automatically creates this task card for you. And then you can define the pop of that task as well as you could have revenue and billing rules that could be unique to that task, or it could be owned by a different department than other tasks within that job. Uh, and then finally, uh, we talked about membership, and then you've got that approval hierarchy. So I can define who approves timesheets, expense reports, and then purchase requisitions on those particular records. So really just a simple way to set up and execute that job. So now once we've got that main structure set up, the next thing I wanna do is define what are the labor rates we're billing at. So like I mentioned, you can bring it in from your GSA uh, schedule. Uh, we've just got a copy function there, or you can just key it right into our labor category price, and this is job specific. So this is pricing for this individual job. It can also be unique to a WBS. So if you had one WBS that billed at one rate, TNM rate, and another one at a different, you can certainly manage that, that concept. And then your labor category codes can have escalations built into them. So in this example, I've got my project management labor category code that starting in 2020 is billing at 211.75, but from 2019, January 1st through January 4th of 2020, it was billing at 192.50. So a couple things that are really powerful about this is one, it can be any day of the month or year. So whenever that escalation happens, it can be in the middle of a timesheet period, middle of a month, the system will know based on the, the day the person charged their time into, what is the proper bill rate. So you, you no longer have to worry about billing these things offline um, or 
uh, worrying about rounding because we've got a great way how we manage rounding that we'll talk about during labor distribution that prevents those you know issues of a penny here, a penny there uh, that add up on a TNM invoice. And then finally, uh, to make it simple for the end user, we've got the ability to default an employee's labor category in the job. So each employee has a corporate labor category code, and let's use Timothy Sneath here. So on this job, Timothy is a project manager. However, his corporate labor category code, we'll just go ahead and we can look up right from that record. It's great that I don't have to go to another module. I can just look up within the list and I'll look up the full uh, record for Timothy. And what we'll see is that Timothy, he is a trainer level three. That's his general or corporate labor category code. So the end user has it defaulted for them so they don't have to think about it and really make it simple for them to manage uh, their timesheet. Uh, just some other general things about uh, the setup here. Uh, we have the ability to set up alerts. And what alerts provide is the ability to compare what's been spent or billed to what's funded or budgeted. This can be done at any level of the WBS, and you can trigger an alert at a certain percentage. That alert can go out to a project manager, a task manager, or you can just hand key an email address in there. So maybe you want it to go out to your client potentially to notify them that that task just hit 50% of funding used as compared to what we've spent. Um, so really a great way to manage that and be notified versus having to run a report. So thanks for joining us today on our Snack Time Snippet. That gives you a little bit of information on setting up a TNM project. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully you join us for another uh, little snippet of Microsoft Dynamics 365 for government contracting. Thank you and have a great day.